Okay, I'm going to go. So not only do I have a stinking cold, so I'm a bit broken, I'm also suffering a few technical issues here. So we've got my laptop via Google Hangouts onto Paul's laptop, which is through to the screen. So um, hopefully this works. Um, and I've got a plan to do a bit of a demo later, so that is definitely going to not work. <laughs> so um, yeah, just, just lowering some expectations initially, just before we start. So um, yeah, so... Um, I, this is just briefly like the kind of thing I'm going to talk about now. Um, I've put this slide in so if anyone's here for innovative journalism, you, um, you're in the wrong room. There was a sign on the door. I don't know if you saw that. Um, but yeah, it's basically going to be about PHP middleware. Um, and this is something that I've only really been learning and using in the last year. Um, but I wanted to share this because it's... Um, it's been a tool that has really um, allowed me to really cut a lot of complexity in, in some systems. So I, yes, first going to talk about very briefly what I mean by that. So this is Dijkstra, who um, started the whole structured programming thing. Um, and yeah, simplicity is prerequisite for reliability. So really like it's kind of become my my um, ethics of, of living my entire life has been about like trying to simplify everything um, and there's an excellent talk by Rich Hickey called Simple Made Easy um, who's seen this talk right um, maybe we should actually just all leave and go and watch this talk instead of mine <laughs> <laughs> Like, seriously, the first thing you do when you leave, go and check this out, because it's, it's, it's amazing and it'll change your life. Um, the real takeaway from it is, um, is that he talks about like, defining what simple is and pointing out that simple doesn't mean easy. So looking at the roots of the word, um, simple comes from simplex, which means one fold, as opposed to complex, which means like inter braided like many folds uh, as opposed to easy which um, comes from something being nearby or at hand so you know in our world that might mean that something is you know easy to get it might be that we can do compose a require ball of mud or um, or that it's within you know the kind of thing that we're familiar with so it's easy um, but simple so easy has a sort of element of um, subjectiveness whereas simple you know, you can kind of get a handle of that like, by looking at how interwoven something is. And, and in Rich Hickey's talk, he brings back this archaic word um, to complect, which means to interleave and to braid. So we now have a word for when, you know, people are coming and adding dependencies to our project. We can say, stop complecting my project, you know. So, so this is kind of set in the scenes because, for me, PHP middleware um, does offer a tool for decomplecting our systems. Um, so another quote, um, again mentioned by Rich Hickey, um, programming when stripped of all its circumstantial irrelevances, so writing code basically, um, boils down to no more or no less than very effective thinking so as to avoid unmastered complexity to very vigorous separation of our many different concerns. So I think the key thing here is that you know, programming isn't about writing code, it's about the learning that we do during that process. Um, it's about how we master that complexity, how we, um, how we deal with that and how we, we separate our concerns so that we can reason about it and then in the end hopefully write some code, but not too much code. So with this idea of decomplexing, um, um, who was here for Ronald's amazing talk on microservices? Yeah. Uh, really good. So um, he'd already covered a few of these things in think, talking about domain-driven design. Um, there's this, also this idea of hexagonal architecture, sometimes called ports and adapters. Um, so this is really just um, you know programming to an interface. So then at a later date you come and plug in an implementation. So there's a bit more to it than that, but um, it's also to thinking about writing framework-independent code. Um, so, yeah, ways of writing the actual 
important bits of our code and not worrying about the framework um, until you know later on. Um, and thin APIs is something that I've been working with a bit, which is where essentially the API just becomes, a, and this is something that's um, good if you're in a you know, with inversion of control with lots of stuff happening on the client side, maybe you're building a rich client app, then really your API could just be a thin layer of business logic on top of your data store. Um, and also um, the modern PHP world um, with some of the better packages on Packagist have started to standardize around common interfaces. And so what this gives us is bits that we can plug in and switch around. Um, and so, yeah, I, yeah, has anyone seen Zend Expressive? So it has this installation process, which you, I've tried to blow it up a bit there, but um, this really shows the sort of modularity that's available in, in, in the wider PHP ecosystem, because when you install this framework, um, it doesn't just give you a whole bunch of stuff. It allows you to pick, um, you know, here the question, which router do you want to use? Which dependency injection container do you want to use? Which templating engine do you want to use? And so you can really start to create the sort of environment that you that works best for you, and take the bits and and they will all interoperate and work together. Um, so I use this idea to think maybe what might um, Drupal be like installing in the future. So when we get to Drupal X, which we're all looking forward to, um, maybe in the installation we get to pick. You know, do we want to use Symfony's routing or is there something else we prefer? Do we prefer fast route? Now, do we want to use Set Symphony's dependency injection container, or do we really hate YAML? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've fallen in love with something called PHPDI. Has anyone tried that out? So they, they describe themselves as dependency injection for humans, and I really like it because it, it's, you, you're writing in PHP. You're doing your definitions in PHP so you get um, you get all of those nice things that your IDE provides um, but yeah there are others as well um, and there's PSR 11 um, which I'm going to talk a bit about PHP fig but that's an um, effort to standardize the idea of a dependency injection container um, and then maybe a question could be um, how do you want to define your content model do you want to use the Drupal's GUI entity construction kits, or do you want to use a data map ORM like Doctrine, or do you want to maybe use the Laravel ORM, uh, Active Record ORM? So, um, yeah, I mean, that's possible, right? We could completely <laughs> <laughs> plug and play all these different parts, and they'll all work together. That's, the, that's what we're aiming towards. Um, and what's going to get us there is PHP fig. <laughs> um, yeah. So there's, there's mixed opinions about PHP fig, I know, but um, it has enabled um, amazing um, things within the PHP ecosystem and pushed PHP forward into the sort of modern world of programming. Is everyone familiar with PHP fig? Yeah? Lots of nods, good. So, yeah, there's these sort of three areas. Um, Auto-loading, which really is the sort of base thing that we need to be able to have packages that easily work together. Um, coding style, it would be nice to standardize on that. Um, you know, if you've got a project that's made up of lots of different components, it's nice to go and, you know, go from one file to another that it's not all laid out all differently. Um, so unfortunately, Drupal doesn't use these coding standards. Um, so there is a bit of difference there, and you do have to keep going and changing your settings in PHP storm depending on what project you're working on um, but obviously the big thing here is interfaces and so I'm, I'm talking about PHP middleware so I'm in particular um, talking about PSR 7 um, this is the HTTP message interface and so it's a standardized way of um, yeah it's a standardized way of thinking about the HTTP request and the HTTP response um, and what this, so, I mean, yeah, so Zend, um, sorry, Symfony HTTP framework, like you see a lot of projects all standardizing on that, so you might think, why don't we just standardize on that, but the distinction is that that is an implementation, whereas PSR7 gives us an interface. 
So there's many different implementations that work better in different contexts. Um, two popular ones, uh, Diacteros has one which is, the, which is now part of the Zend free framework kind of world. And Guzzle, on the client side, has the, has the implementation. And, and the great thing, that, and this is like some sort of pseudocode to kind of demonstrate that, is that when you've got a common interface, these two different packages can actually work together. So in this example here, this is, uh, this is a very simple proxy um, that's wrapping an XML web service and converting it to JSON. So you see the first line there, um, using the Actros to create a request object from the globals. So that's generating a Deactorus um, request object. And then creating a Guzzle client, which is a different package, which expects um, a request and passing that in, um, maybe changing the URL or something. And then what I get back from there is a Guzzle response object. But because that matches the same interface, I can then pass that back to Deactorus to emit that back to the browser. So does everyone got a few blank faces. Does everyone think that's a good idea? <laughs> okay, so hopefully that sort of explains a bit. Um, so when we think about like our applications and think what is our application, um, basically this this thing here, this is this is our app. And what we take in is a request and we give out a response. So the idea with PHP middleware is that um, we we don't want to get involved with changing the app to change the behavior um, because, you know, we may, may look like this. Oh, uh, there, it's a bit of a lag. Um, but we can actually change behavior or add functionality by wrapping the app or, or decorating it. So if we can intercept the request coming in and if we can... Um, also do the same thing on the other side as well. Essentially, we can, you know, get in the middle here and change the behavior of the app. So here's an example. Um, I've taken an existing app and wrapping cores around that, um, a cores configuration. So, um, again, I'll show you, hopefully show you some more examples if the setup works in a bit, live examples. But um, we're taking in a request at the top. We're doing some analysis on that to see what kind of cause request we need to, uh, cause response we need and then um, in the middle here you can see um, that um, in a, one of these cases we're passing that request onto the app and then just getting the response and returning that um, in another example below we're passing the request to, to the app getting the response back from the app and then we're adding on our cause headers before we return that to the client so you can see this, if it operates there, then essentially we're adding functionality without actually having to get into the complexity of, of getting into the app and changing it. So Stack PHP um, is a way of using middleware with the HTTP foundation from Symfony. This is what really, I guess, first popularized the idea of middleware in the PHP community. Um, and obviously, so these work with HTTP Foundation, so they work, um, that would, these will work with Drupal. And another popular framework is the Slim framework. Um, and this also has um, middleware. So um, this is a, this first block here is where the middleware is being added. And then the second block is the actual um, the actual um, action and part of the app. So when you get there, what it's doing is it's getting the response and writing out hello into the response. But because of the middleware above, you can see that that's going to intercept and first write before. Then it's going to process the next, which is the next middleware or the next thing in the, in the stack. And then before you get the response back, it writes after. So again, this is another way of, of wrapping. And what you see here is a slightly different signature, um, and this, so this brings me to the single pass versus double pass. So, going back to mentioning about PHP Fig again, um, you know, it's PHP Fig 
was about standardising what was happening in the PHP world. So looking at the frameworks and the frameworks coming together and saying, let's standardise the way that we're doing things. In this particular case, um, the, the first um, option here, the double pass approach, is actually what kind of became standard with all the early adopters of PHP seven, uh, PSR7 objects. Um, and so in this one you can see that your middleware takes a request, takes a response, and takes this next callable. And so what your middleware will do is you know, potentially do something with the request, then it can call the next to pass down the ch um, chain into the, to the next middleware, and then pass um, whatever comes back back, so it has to return a response. And this is the format that is um, popular in like JavaScript, like with Express. Um, this is where this, this kind of came from. And, and it's good, um, I'm trying to remember why it's good. I have got my notes. It's good because, um, obviously, dependency injection. So the thing inside, you're passing the response in. So the thing inside doesn't need to know about um, what particular um, implementation of response you're using. It can just get that response object and add what it needs to into it before it returns it. Um, but the single pass approach, this lambda approach, um, this just takes the request and takes the delegate, which is like the next um, callable. Um, and so in this approach, you, you need another way of, of dealing with that, like being able to generate the request, and so, so the response. So your option is to either bake in, like um, creating a JSON response using a symphony, you know, JSON response object, or use a factory and pass in, so that, um, you can pass in a factory that will generate responses um, as a dependency, so you, you remove that dependency. So you get the benefit of the double pass approach, um, but you also um, benefit from the fact that this is um, much easier to reason about, because one of the problems, and, and I played around with double pass for, for quite a long time before I finally got won over by the arguments for single pass, um, one of the problems is that you, when you're getting the response passed in, you're never really sure what state that response is going to be in. So ideally it would be a blank response ready to put your um, result into, but um, you, know, there are, you can't actually guarantee anything about that response because you're not the one who's generated it. So the single pass has, has kind of won out, and that's what's going to be um, in PSR 15. So this is what you get when you search for PSR 15. Uh, it's someone paying a Yamaha PSR 15 with their feet. <laughs> um, no, this is this is the actual thing. So this is a draft um, recommendation, and it uses that single pass approach. And um, so you have the process. Sorry, the bottom one here is the middleware interface. So this is what you you implement, um, where you will take in the request, and you'll take in the delegate, which will be the next thing in the stack, and you will return from here always an instance of a response um, interface. And the thing above is the delegate interface, so that's what you're actually being passed in, and that just has, um, that just defines that that has a process function. So you know that the thing that you're being passed in, you can call process on it to trigger, you know, the rest of the inside of your stack. Um, as I said, to make this work with dependency injection, you need HTTP factories, so there's a draft recommendation for that as well. Um, and there's also something which I find in working with all of this that really um, is really useful is this um, invoker interface. And so on their readme, they describe it as, you know, who doesn't need an over-engineered call user funk? Um, so what this interface does is it, um, and there's an implementation here as well, is it expands on the kind of idea of like, I need to call something. Um, so perhaps, um, you know, with, if you've, has anyone worked with the RabbitMQ thing in PHP? Because I find that really horrible to work with because you get these methods with long lists of arguments you have to pass in and you can't remember which one's which. And like the arguments are true, 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 false, true, true. And I can't remember if that's, 
know, which one of those is, is, is doing what. Um, with named arguments, you, you pass in your arguments by name. So that's one of the things that the invoker interface um, gives us. And the other thing is that um, sometimes the thing I'm calling has dependencies. And it's a real pain for me to know how to instantiate all the dependencies for the thing that I'm trying to call. So the invoker can be aware of my dependency injection container. So I can just call my thing. And if it needs dependencies, the, the invoker can deal with instantiating it. And I pass my arguments in by name so I know exactly what it's getting. Okay. Does everyone get that? Any questions so far? Um, I haven't got my notes, so I can't see which slide's next, but it's this one. Okay. Um, so this is an example, um, kind of simplified from a real project that um, is really just doing um, some very basic, um, applying some very basic business logic on top of a, a data store. So there's not really a lot going on in this particular app. Um, but still splitting it into layers means that, um, well, A, I could reuse components that are already available on packages, so I had to implement about maybe 100 lines of code <coughs> for the whole thing. Um, but also each of those individual layers can be testable. Um, and particularly when you get into the middle of here, um, you can actually build that bit first. So I can actually build the core of my app without having to think about any of those outer layers. And so those outer layers are going to be things like how am I dealing with authentication? How am I dealing with um, generating requests and this kind of thing? So you can actually, you know, if you're into domain-driven design, you can actually build some actual objects that just have the logic of your domain and you don't have to think about any of these sort of environment that you're working in. Um, so I got a bit distracted there. Um, yeah, so this is just, I think, just showing that the... Um, each of these layers here um, implements this, this thing on the left here, this process where they get called and you get the request and you get the next thing that's inside you um, so you can do what you need to do, pass the request on to the delegate and then you get a response from the delegate and if you want you can again do some further monkeying around with it and then you return that response so this creates that sort of going down and coming back out again. Um, so there's a lot of different ways of doing this. Um, there's some whole frameworks based around this. There's Slim, um, Express, um, there's um, Stack, Relay. Is it Relay is another popular one. Um, I've, you know, for very simple things, just use, um, just use a simple object like this. Um, and I Basically, when I can, you construct this object, you pass in an array, which is um, this, which defines the stack. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. There, you pass in the invoker in interface. So this is the thing that is like my replacement for call user func. This is the thing that takes the things on my stack and knows how to invoke them. Um, and you take the response factory because um, there are, as you see within here, sometimes I need to create a response. So the process function, and you can see this implements the delicate interface, and that's important because um, to the outside world, my thing that's running my middleware is also a middleware. Um, so basically, um, at the outer level, you'll call process, and it will check the first thing on the stack. Um, it will increment its counter to point to the next thing in the stack, and then pass itself in as the delegate. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's kind of weird, isn't it? So this thing sort of, yeah, this thing has the, the, the pointer to the first thing in the stack. It gets that reference, points to the second thing in the stack, and then passes itself in as the delegate. So it, it can take itself down the chain. And then when it gets to the bottom of the stack, you return all the way back out again. So that's that bit in the middle. And then... The last thing on this slide is, is showing this idea of using the invoker. Um, so you see I'm passing in using the, the 
square bracket callable um, syntax in PHP where I'm passing the middleware, which is the current thing that I got off the top of the stack, with the word process to say call the process function on there, and then I'm naming my arguments, saying request is the request that I got, and the delegate is this. Okay. Hopefully that's not too weird. Um, I'll see some, show you some more examples of using the invoker in a bit because um, it's quite nice because this doesn't need to be aware of any of the dependencies of the middleware. The invoker um, can use the con dependency injection container to do that. Okay. So, yeah, this is just showing that the middleware is a, an array of, well, things that the, that the invoker knows how to invoke. So, um, yeah, if you look here, the, the middleware is used, it's passed to the invoker with the process word, so each of these um, things here must be instantiatable into an object that has the process method, basically. Um, so, yeah, I'm this is using the syntax of um, PHPDI, which is the <coughs> dependency injection container I'm using. Uh, okay, yeah, so that gets us into the core of our app and what's happening in the core of our app, we commonly think of um, dividing this up using MVC. So the other thing I want to talk about today is that um, perhaps MVC isn't the right thing that we should be doing. Um, and this is the webby kind of version of MVC where we've got the front controller which is like our router that dispatches the request to the right controller. And then you've got the view and you've got the model, but also the view to talk to the model. And so thinking about, like, is this the right thing? Well, quite often in PHP frameworks, you'll see the view is a template. Whereas actually when we're thinking about our application, the presentation layer, we're not presenting to the world a template. That's, that's the body. What we're actually presenting is a response. So the response is actually a lot more than just the body of the response. There might be other things in there as well. So there's this um, alternative kind of view of things, which is the action domain responder, where... Oh, and the other thing is that also in the controller, we tend to put all of our actions in, in one controller, and then you have to instantiate that whole controller just to call one action. So we split out the controller into separate actions, and also, we combine the, um, some of these things, and we get action domain responders. So, all of your domain logic goes into the domain bit, and the action knows um, basically how to call that, and also how to respond to the incoming request. Um, and so, yeah, and then I wrap that in a resolver which is just the router which just takes an incoming path and decides which of these action domain responders to, to route that to. Um, which of these actions, I should say. So, I've been playing around with um, some ideas with this and there's a few links to like some experiments I've been doing on GitHub. This is kind of how my implementation of the idea of action works in that it has an input it has a domain and it has a responder. So when you create, when you define an action, you define how to map. The input basically encapsulates all the knowledge about how to take the request and generate the parameters we need for our domain. Um, so I've written down name logs there again to remind me that um, we want to be thinking about extracting named arguments. So when we call our domain, we're calling with specific arguments, not just passing in a request. Um, and I've also put down data transfer objects because when we're thinking about domain um, and entities, we shouldn't ever allow an entity to be invalid. Um, from the point of creation, an entity should always stay um, a valid thing. And so, to get around the fact that sometimes we have a form state coming in, um, we use a data transfer object, which is basically what it says. It's an object that's used to transfer some data. And at the point where that's validated, then that can become an entity. But we don't want to like let invalid data slip into our um, domain 
um, because then we could you know end up with it persisting into the ORM and it's a problem so so yeah so the input will deal with generating taking the request and turning it into some input parameters then you've got the domain which is um, just very basic simple PHP that describes your business logic and then what comes out of there is a payload which I'm still not entirely sure the best way to do this um, at the moment I'm just using a simple object with a, that kind of wraps an array um, and I think that there's probably better ways to do this but that payload goes to a responder which that knows how to generate the response so that may be formatting it into JSON that may be taking your object that comes out and uh, wrapping it with like a twig template or something you know that that is contained in there so we've we've got the separation of concerns but I think um, I think this is a bit more webby a bit more API -y than, than MVC so this is the bit where it's all going to go wrong um, <laughs> shall I try the demo? what time have you got? got 15 minutes you are screen sharing can you see that? Out of presentation mode. In. Oh, there we go. Oh, no, no, because it thinks I'm selecting text. <laughs> right, that's not valid PHP anymore. <laughs> <laughs> let's exit that and let's go back to presentation. <laughs> um, Actually, um, this is on GitHub, so I can just, I may not have ch committed the changes that I made this morning, I don't, yeah. but um, I'll just show you the code instead of trying to do a live demo. Um, this was all going to be amazing and you were going to see like a few lines of code doing all of this amazing stuff, but um, just have to use your imagination instead. <laughs> so. As I said, um, I use this uh, in this example. I've used this. Oh, we need it bigger, don't we? Is that actually legible? Okay. So instead of using YAML here in PHP DI, uh, we're using actual PHP. So I'm saying that my middleware is this array and all I've got in there at the moment is this action thing um, I've got my roots which um, has anyone seen the fast root router? anyone work with that? Right, check that out because it's awesome but this is the syntax for that so um, it's pretty obvious what it's doing um, in the resolver um, basically this this is saying like respond to get method this is the path and then this string here is just something that the dependency injection container is aware of so if it resolves it resolves to something and pulls it out of the container um, and that thing is this um, action class here so I've created an instance of that action class there and um, I've set the domain to be this get all lists class okay and I've also I've got this um, to do. Obviously, it's got to be a to do list app, right? That's what everyone demos for some reason. Um, so I've got this to do repository interface, which defines how to get and store to do lists. And um, I've got an implementation of it here, which just um, persists things to a file. But that could be switched out for a database or whatever. And so. So this is the uh, this is the interface. It's just um, list to dos returns an array, 
save items takes a string of a list name and an array of items, and get items takes a string, the list name, and returns some items. Okay, so that's, that's pretty straightforward. Um, I can show you the implementation of that. Um, this is using Fly System, which someone talked about earlier. Um, so this gives me a file system interface and allows me to plug in different file systems depending on you know, whether I want to use the local file system or S3 or something like that. And like my list to-do list here is just listing all the files and then out of that array of objects plucking out the file name meth um, property out of all of those. So, um, Oh yeah, I use this um, I use this functional PHP library, which is brilliant. It saves so much boilerplate like code dealing with arrays of things and stuff. Um, so then you get into the actual domain of the application, and so this is where, like, right in the middle of your you know, ball of mud, where you normally have like quite complicated code. Um, I'll show you the get all list action first. So. Um, the dependency injection container, when it's resolved to this, will have dealt with passing in the to-do repository as a dependency. And the invoke method, which is the thing that makes this callable, um, just calls the list to-dos, creates a payload and returns it. So I'll show you another example that takes in um, an argument there. So this is, a, this is getting an actual list where my invoke method takes a name and so this is where it gets um, interesting because I'm using named arguments. This all links together. So in my um, in my root for that, which is here, commented out. Can you still see it? Is that too hard to see? Yeah. You can see that in my root, I've defined a placeholder there called name, and my I talked about that input handler that takes a response, um, that will convert that name into a name parameter for when it calls my action. So, yeah, sorry I haven't been able to do like a proper demo of that, but feel free to like look at this and have a look. Um, let me try and... Oh, yeah. So... This is the this is the action. So in the um, you saw in the in the PHPDI config where I created an action object and I called the method domain and set my actual domain class. Um, this is the um, this basically allows me to override and set the domain the input or the responder for a particular action. So what I tend to do is have um, a default input handler that just takes all the get parameters, the parse body, whatever it can find, and turn those into named arguments to pass to the invoker. Um, and I tend to use just a default responder that just takes whatever it's given and JSON encode it and deliver it. But you can do... Um, you can override those for specific routes. So one specific route, maybe you just want to, you know, format the output differently, or you maybe you want to wrap your um, application with a content negotiation middleware, which will deal with content negotiation. You could then use that in your responder to decide how how to respond. Um, so this is it all put together. Um, action equals new action. Um, I'm passing in invoker because that's a dependency there. Um, setting the input to default input, domain to register user and responder to default JSON responder. Um, so yeah, this is kind of an idea of what those stages might look like. Um, as I mentioned, the input handler will just create an array of named arguments. The domain method then um, you know your domain that's the bit where you're actually using those arguments to actually do something um, and you're returning the payload which then the, the responder knows how to convert that payload into a into an actual response um, and I'm just yeah I'm creating a JSON object there but you probably 
use a factory just to make sure that you're fully abstracted. So, yeah, so that's, that's creating the action, and this is, um, you know, what those bits might look like. This is actually how the action actually works when it's called. So, in the core of the ADR pattern, when a, a route has been resolved to a specific action, these are the steps it goes through. So, it takes the invoker, and it calls its input handler, passing in the request. So you can see that here, it's calling input handler and the array of named arguments is um, just the request. Then it calls, your, calls out your actual domain, passing whatever the input handler created from the request to your domain. And from that it gets the payload. And then it calls the response handler, passing in the payload and the request. Um, and then yes, your this final stage here, the response handler will generate um, an instance of a response. Okay, so there was going to be a bit in the demo where I showed you the different steps of um, the like showing adding some different middleware in. So um, if you look at the example code, you'll see there's um, I wrap the that domain I wrap that domain with a JSON payload middleware, which takes the body of the request and, and JSON decodes it, passes that in as name parameters. And then in the, in the next step, I wrap that with the HTTP authentication middleware, which um, deals with authenticating. But you can look at this um, repository, and there's a whole load of middlewares that are just ready to, to use. And that's it. Um, yeah, questions or... Yeah? Um, when, I, when I first, I first uh, approached to uh, middleware, uh, to me it looked like, and I think it's a really strong sort of feature, like an onion, mm. the request uh, uh, to get through the, the onion that, that becomes the response of the heart. But when you show the um, ADR, ADR um, pattern, it looked like there's not an onion. It's like that any action takes the control and then it does mm. everything. Okay, so you can stop the, yeah. The, the traversing so, um, so I'm, yeah, I'm presenting two things, I guess. There, one is the is the idea of the middleware um, decorating your app with new functionality without having to change the change what's in the middle. Um, the ADR is actually a solution for then for when you the, the 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 ADR yeah is a solution for what do you do when you get to the core of your app. What's the simplest way that we can create our business logic um, without any um, dependency on the framework or the ORM or anything that we're yeah, okay, so depending on? Yeah, middleware concept is the core of the audience. It's not yeah. normal middleware, it's just the audience. Yeah. yeah, so in this example here, I've got, um, I've got a cause, a JSON payload, um, a JSON web token middleware, and then in the middle, I've got this router. And, and that's actually um, invoking, that's configured to invoke actions depending on the route. So the ADR is the thing in the middle. Okay. So yeah, you're right, this, this is less of an onion and more of a pipeline. Um, and actually for more complicated things, um, one of the projects I'm going to talk about tomorrow in the talk on Elasticsearch, this domain actually does become a, a processing pipeline. So I've got examples of that tomorrow. Okay. More questions? No. That's either a good or a bad thing. But. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, everyone.